When it comes to PS1 platformers, a lot of them were still 2D. Brady, what is this? What are you doing? I'm reviewing Punky Skunk. Punky Skunk. <gasps> Punky Skunk! No! Punky Skunk! Oh, Punky Skunk! Dude! What's Punky Skunk? It's a 2D platformer for the PS1. Came out in 1996 in Japan, though it didn't come out in North America until 1998. It was actually originally a Super Nintendo game, but development continued past the end of the 16-bit era, so they decided to release it on the PlayStation instead. I can totally see that. It really does look like a Super Nintendo game instead of a PS1 game. I mean, PS1 sprites are usually a lot bigger and more detailed, but, you know, I kind of like the simplicity to it. I used to play the crap out of this game when I was a kid. Then came that really sad day when I... Went and lost it. Yeah, that's your second copy, isn't it? You found this one at a yard sale, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, it's always a great feeling when you finally found that game you had as a kid at a yard sale and you get to re-experience it again. But, uh, yeah, it sounds like you really like this game, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you really like that game. Well, so, we'll give it a playthrough, we'll record it, and we'll see how it goes. Sounds good to me. Where are you going? The game literally opens up to Punky and his friends saying, We gotta stop the bad guy, and before long, we're already in the first level. Wow, straight to business. A rare quality these days. It's a fairly straightforward 2D platformer. You play as Punky, a skunk with a big-ass mohawk. You got a big-ass heart and a big-ass fart. What? Just press the, press the square button. Oh, he does a little skunk fart. This is your standard attack. It's got a good range and the hit detection is fairly responsive. The cloud of gas floats out a little further than the initial tail whip, so it's almost like a projectile attack. Using it feels good. Doing it mid-jump is something where the timing isn't hard to get, but it's just challenging enough to feel satisfying. The character's movement speed is pretty slow, uh, comparable to KO the Kangaroo, though it doesn't feel as hindering as it did in that game. It's definitely weird at first, but it's not even something you think about or notice soon enough. The levels are compact enough for the slow speed not to feel like it's dragging on. The goal of each stage is simply to reach the end of the level. Uh, once you're there, you'll jump on a button and release the flag. Wait, this is just the thing from the end of every Donkey Kong Country 2 level that you'd... Are you saying my skunk's a ripoff? No, it's... No, it's... it's... I kind of really like the character design in this game. It's nice and cute and Japanesey. He's got some great idle animations. The game's presentation overall is pretty dang good. Everything's detailed and vibrant. The sprites look great. Though it does get a little annoying how Punky says "yeah" every single time you jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind of name is Punky anyhow? I mean, like nothing about him really strikes me as punk. Maybe, maybe the mohawk, but it, I don't know. It, he just kind of looks like a skunk in a jumpsuit to well, me. Well, in Japan, he was known as Coolie Skunk because you know he's cool. That's an even worse name. Well, would you prefer his name to be like Funky Skunk? Like yes, Funky Skunk's a way better name. Way better. Yeah. Blech! Pause. Ha, <laughs> yeah, I didn't. That's okay. Didn't didn't Bubsy do the same? Yeah, Bubsy did the same thing. Now we know where Bubsy stole that from. Wow, you can see background objects outside of the plane of the game. Like, the foreground doesn't cover enough of the screen. Oh, God, what's going on there? Yeah, that's one thing I've always noticed. It's like, they didn't work far enough down, I guess. Put some tape over your gut! After beating each level, you'll get to do a mini game. It could be something like Simon Says, except you're raising and lowering flags, button mashing to power up generators, slot machines, or looking for an image in a puzzle. If you win, you'll get extra lives and sometimes a health piece that'll form a new health slot if you collect enough of them, kind of like heart pieces in Legend of Zelda. Are you still calling my skunk a ripoff? Well, no, I, you know, I, I just like to draw comparisons to, like, popular games that a lot of people have played, or maybe games that I've done before, you know, maybe people get, like, maybe get a better understanding of how the, the, the I don't know, let's play the game some more. Every stage is home to a different kind of power-up that'll help you along the way. The first is a paraglider. It'll slow your descent and can be also used in updrafts to reach new heights. Kind of like Rayman's God health- God damn it! Yeah, I do do that a lot, don't I? <laughs> 
There's also a snowboard, pogo stick, roller blades, and digging claws. The different power-ups will also change the way you'll take on your enemies. I mean, you normally can't jump on enemies. Jumping on them is only going to make you take damage. But when you have certain power-ups, you will be able to jump on top of them. For example, the pogo stick, obviously, but also the paraglider. However, when you have one of these power-ups equipped, you will no longer be able to use Punky's gas cloud attack. This makes switching back and forth between forms very integral to playing the game, as certain attacking methods are better for certain situations. But honestly, if you'd ask me, I would have just completely removed the entire changing mechanic completely in favor of always being able to jump on enemies and always being able to use a gas cloud. Making each one a separate entity that you have to switch between just kind of seems a little excessive. Isn't that so weird though? You can't just jump on enemies in your normal form. I mean, that's kind of what we've become accustomed to in platforming games. That probably tripped up a lot of first-time players. I do feel that some power-ups are definitely better than others. The pogo stick just makes you jump higher. I literally beat one stage with it by holding X and right. I found some of the stages with the roller blades a little annoying too. I mean, you can't stop, you're always moving forward, yet sometimes you're expected to land on small platforms. And I mean, it's not hard to land on them, but it sure is hard to stay on them. Between levels, you'll visit a Mario 3 styled world map. Here you can select the next stage or previous stages that you've already played. It kind of irks me that the water on the main screen doesn't move. It's just like perfectly still. Yeah, the music doesn't loop very well either. It's just, it, it fades out and then it fades back in. Yeah, they, they definitely could have done that a little better. There's eight worlds total, each one sporting a handful of levels. I thought the game was really easy near the beginning, but I was pleased to realize that the challenge does start to rack up near the later levels. Each world ends with a boss battle against Battler's Commander Chu. The first fight plays like a typical boss battle, you know, you wait for your opportune moment to attack and land a hit, rinse and repeat until you've won, but the following battles all play like a kind of mini game. One has you driving a vehicle that'll catch and throw bombs, another's a boat race, there's a quick draw mini game. The one I really hated was this volleyball game. And I mean, I thought it was cute and funny, you know, like he's dre he dresses up like a volleyball for it, but I found the game itself super frustrating. Now, my biggest mistake in playing this one was that I kept trying to jump and spike the ball downwards. Doing it that way, the hit detection kept forgetting how to work. You really gotta stay on the ground and take your time with it. Doing it this way, it's really not too hard, so there's a quick tip for anyone out there playing this. During the final levels, you'll get one last power-up, a jetpack. Using this, you can temporarily be able to fly, but you will have to land every now and then to recharge it. I hate this final level so much because you get stuck in this big labyrinth, and then you get lost, and then you end up at the start again, and then you just go in and out, in and out, and get all confuffled. I actually watched a speedrun of this game one time, and he didn't go through the labyrinth, Brady. Because you can just go over this wall right here, and the whole level's over, and you can skip the whole thing. I had no idea that you could do that. I did. The final fight against Chu is super easy. You can just get him in a stun lock and literally beat him within seconds. Though the actual final boss with Battler though, he's pretty tough. This is actually the first time you even get to see him at the very end of the game. I mean, like they talk about him the whole game, but it's Chu you're actually dealing with throughout. He kinda looks like Star Wolf, honestly. Can't let you do that, punky. <laughs> you know. Star Wolf? No. Brady, you're not funny. The part that always trips me up is when he inflates and start bouncing around the screen, but I found out if you stay underneath him, he'll bounce directly downwards, bouncing just up and down instead of on a diagonal that's really hard to dodge. This makes the final part super easy. Punky descends back down to his friends after he's won and says, Yeah, we did it and it cuts to the credits. Wow, this was definitely a game pretty light on story. It's just, let's beat the bad guy. Okay, we beat the bad guy. The end. There's really not much to it. It was nice and cute though. I like the characters, the music was pretty nice, the visuals are all great. It's definitely a very charming game, albeit kind of an underwhelming and fairly simple game. So yeah, that was alright. You know, a simple 2D game. I don't think it was anything like amazing or too too special, but it was simple, challenging, fun. It got very challenging near the uh, the end of the game. I can I can definitely see why a lot of people consider this game to be quite a classic. Yeah, dude, I, I love this game so much. Yeah, you played it a lot as a kid. Yeah, they also made another uh, classic of mine, a uh, real favorite, uh, Hook. Really? The one on Super Nintendo? Yeah. Really? They made that as well? Yeah. Really?
Maybe we should review that one next. No!